What is up all my homesteaders and homesteaders to be and homestead viewers and anybody else out there that's watching these videos. Jack here at the Mindful Homestead and today it is beautiful spring day. It's the second day of spring here in New Hampshire and we are looking at tilling in the garden beds behind us. Now I know a lot of people out there they do no-till gardening and things like that we till and the reason why we till is because we've got a curated mix of compost and loam and dirt in our boxes because of that it's virtually the same top to bottom we don't do like a hugel culture method or anything like that i know that's pretty popular and hey more power to you if that's how you do it but we do ours a little bit differently uh we definitely use a more amended soil structure uh, we do still maintain all organic practices but we don't follow a no-till uh, practices in our garden we we till our soil every spring so today we're going to do that um we are going to maybe do some planting today we've got some early crops that can go in first things first though i gotta get the tiller out so i'm gonna get that out filled up with gas and then we'll get into the garden and start tilling stuff over We got the beds tilled out. We go grab the rake and rake them out now, and then uh, we'll put some seeds in. What do you think this thing's for? It's for tilling. And it also helps take weeds out. So we're going to be planting just a few things today. We're going to do escarole, some broccoli rob, spinach, kale, broccoli, and then a couple of um, varieties of radishes. So these are the seeds that we're looking at putting in today, possibly arugula. Um, these are pretty old, so I don't know if they're going to sprout. Uh, I found it. It was a seed packet I just had kind of laying around. So we'll see if they come up. Escarole is an early crop. You can plant this. It does really well. This broccoli does well. Radishes are awesome to plant. They're an easy food to produce very quickly. I think time to harvest on these is 25 days. From in the ground to 25 days, we'll have these come up. Spinaches and kale are great early season crops. You can put these in before your last frost. You know, we have five inches of snow forecasted for Monday. It's Saturday right now, so 
And what we're going to do with these is we're just going to put them in the ground. We're not going to water them or anything, but we want to get them under the snow so that once that snow melts off in the days afterwards, because it's going to get really warm after the snow, uh, it actually is almost going to be like a self-watering crop. So we'll put them in today and then we'll have them come up on their own. Broccoli Rob, this is a great plant. Um, if you're not familiar with it, it's similar to broccoli in the way it looks. However, it does have a slightly more bitter taste to it. Um, great thing to plant. You can plant it and you can grow it up whole and eat everything. Uh, or you can actually just eat the, eat the sprouts that come up from it um, as a microgreen. They're extremely good. They have a bittery pepper taste to them, almost like arugula. And they're very, very good mixed in with salads or you can eat them cooked as well. They're, they're just awesome. We're gonna do our broccoli down here. And then we're gonna do three rows going up this way. Um, that's gonna be kale over there. It's gonna be spinach in the middle. And then we're gonna do our broccoli rob over here, down on that far end, over there. We're gonna do a row of escarole. Last thing I want to do today is pull the sap buckets. I checked one of the buckets this morning and uh, it had yellow sap in it, which if you remember from the last video, which I'll link up here, yellow sap's no good. Uh, it means it's either coming out of the tree funky or the bacteria has gotten to it and started eating the sugar in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these buckets and dump them and then I'm just going to stash them in the garage. We're done with sap for the year for us. So there are some other people out there that are still boiling, uh, but for us, we've got enough sap to last us a year. Or we've got enough syrup to last us a year. So we'll just get rid of what we have and be happy with what we made so far. that I just dumped actually had bugs in it too. A bunch of gnats and small flies have gotten in there. So it's pretty much the time of year where the sap's done and uh, time to move on to other things like gardening.
I was coming down the line and I was pulling out all the taps on it and just storing them. And uh, when I got to this tap, I pulled the tap out of the tree and the leader where it connected to this joint just fell right off. So I looked at it and I was like, oh, huh. It was chewed through. And then as I was going to put everything back together and just kind of stash it, I saw that right there it was chewed through. So I can just replace between the next tap up and here. But there is some chewing on the rest of the line as well. So I might just end up pulling this whole line and rerouting it a little bit better for next year. Uh, this line itself was it was run between like seven trees and could have been done better. So lesson learned. I should have checked this earlier. Uh, it makes sense now why we weren't getting any sap in that bucket, even though there were seven trees on this line. Um, sap production was really low and I thought it was just because it was an off year. We didn't have a lot of snow, but uh, the other trees were making a decent amount of sap. It was just this line. So I should have come through and checked it. It's my fault, but that's what it's all about learning on the homestead. I'm going to leave these things right here by the spigot. That way tomorrow morning I can come out and not forget to wash them like I did with the buckets before when we had fermented feed in them. They got pretty gross, so don't want to let that happen again. We're going to make sure these are washed out and put up nice and clean so the next time we need them, they're good to go. Thanks everyone for watching. Just want to say that I hope everyone out there is being safe. There's some pretty crazy times that we're living through right now, and uh, at least for me, I've never experienced anything like this, so we're all in a pretty weird place here in New Hampshire. Um, we haven't had any mandatory shutdowns or anything like that yet, but it's definitely a weird thing right now. People are, the people, friends that I've spoken to on the phone and family and things like that, everyone's in a pretty weird place. So just hopefully everyone is safe out there. Um, we love you all. We don't want anything to happen to you. So we'll definitely keep you in our thoughts. If there's anyone out there that needs anything, any way we can help from Southern New Hampshire, definitely let us know and we'll do the best we can. Until next time, thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.